So running for 10 minutes, uh, losing your breath is great. Being hungry once in a while is great. Being hot in a sauna has benefits. Even being cold, we think, can help. We call these these concepts, well, overall, they, they're called hormesis, H-O-R-M-E-S, um, M-E-S-I-S. And the idea is that our bodies need a little bit of perceived adversity. Think of it this way. Uh, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And what's happening, we've discovered, comes back to these longevity genes that I mentioned earlier. We work on a set of seven genes called sirtuins. There are, there are others, but these ones control the scratches and they control your body's energy and fat content, your brain, Alzheimer's even, how, how fast that progresses. And here's the, the key thing. When you exercise, when you're hungry, these genes come on. They protect the body. They give you longer life, we think, and certainly health, increased health. But when you're sitting down, you don't do any of that stuff. They just say, hey, times are good. We don't need to work hard. Your body will not protect itself unless it actually thinks there's a threat to survival. So that's hormesis, and it's super important. So is that is hormesis the, the longevity gene that you're speaking of? Well, hormesis is the concept of keep your body in a stress state okay. every day, once in a while. But actually getting to your point, Rob, about being hungry in particular, mm -hmm. um, I've always tried to keep a, a lean weight. I just have known that that's healthier. So I've tried to do that. Uh, but I thought that eating small meals during the day was the way to go, because that's what nutritionists have said for at least most of the 20th century. Right. I don't believe that anymore. I think that the idea that you should always be satisfied and have snacks in between meals is wrong. I mean, certainly not not wrong for teenagers. We don't want malnutrition or starvation, heaven forbid. But what we're talking about is people 30, 40, 50 and beyond where metabolism is starting to slow down. You're already gaining weight if you eat three meals a day. You don't want to do that. So I skip breakfast. I often skip lunch. I have a normal dinner, uh, healthy greens and maybe a bit of meat. Um, mm -hmm. Though I've recently switched uh, to just fish as meat to see how that goes. Mm -hmm. But what's important is when you've got that hunger state, um, and you, know, you call it hunger, but I'm, I'm really never hungry. I'm used to this. After two weeks, you don't feel hungry. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm drinking tea and coffee in the morning. It feels great, actually. I feel much better than bl being bloated. What's going on at the cellular level is a lot. Those longevity genes come on, and they turn on a process in particular called autophagy. You might call it autophagy, depending on where you live. And that is the process that grabs the old old proteins in the cell and digests them. We have a lot of old proteins that sit around and don't do a lot of good. In fact, in the case of Alzheimer's disease, that's the reason we get Alzheimer's disease is a lot of misfolded old proteins, one called A-beta, for example. And our bodies need to chew those up to stay young and healthy. And a, a, a really good friend of mine and colleague down at Albert Einstein College of Medicine, her name is Maria Anna Cuervo, or Anna Maria Cuervo, you should uh, look her up if you're curious. She's the star of this, and she's discovered a type of autophagy that happens when you go hungry for three or more days, and it's called chaperone-mediated autophagy. And that's the deep cleanse. That grabs all of the really bad proteins and old ones that have crystallized and formed these tight uh, bundles that are very hard to get rid of, um, and just chews them up. And mm -hmm. she has new work. Uh, I think it's coming out in the next few weeks, actually, she just had a nature paper. Now she's coming out with another big paper that says if you turn this process on in the mouse, it lives dramatically longer. Um, I, I think it was at least 20% longer and they're healthier. They look great. You look at a mouse that's got this and it's shiny and black coat and the other ones are gray and can barely walk. It's huge. And right now, the only way to stimulate that process is to go hungry or skip mm -hmm. meals, I should say, Rob. Um, but we're develop I'm, I'm working with Anna Maria uh, on a medicine that would give you know patients that kind of feeling so that older people sick people people in hospital you know obviously wouldn't have to uh, fast for three or more days that's not necessarily what you want to have if you're recovering from a disease but here's the point you can induce hormesis with a pill and that's what a lot of my companies work on Interesting. So <clears throat> is there a fast that it's too long? Because I've sat with a doctor before who said, you know, I was, I was talking about, thinking about doing a 10 day water fast. And he's like, well, at that point in time, it actually starts to be, you know, you go, it, you're going so far that you're actually starting to do harm to your body. So is it three, four, five days that tends to be perfect to go into this hormesis? And then um, 
you know, is there, a t is, is it, is three days the, the amount of time that we at least want to go to, to get into that state? Like what is the, what is the, the typical amount of time that you guys recommend? Yeah. Well, well, there's two mistakes in, in your sentences, unfortunately, uh, Rob. <laughs> One It'd probably be a lot more without them for the rest of the interview. <laughs> no, it's totally inadvertent. I'm I'm being a bit facetious. Uh, we don't recommend stuff. I definitely don't recommend stuff. Okay. I can tell you scientifically what's known. Right. And then the other mistake was we actually don't know. We're on the cusp of learning this, but mm. uh, we know that three days is good. Is five days optimal, or do you start to lose muscle mass mm. too much? And uh, doctors like Peter Atia, A T T I A, a good friend of mine. He's self-experimenting. He's got some patients, but we really don't know. We need more clinical trials to know that. Um, I would I would say that what I do is harmless. Three days, probably all good. Five days, I would start to think that any more than that would start to take away muscle mass, and you don't want to yeah. do that. Yeah. So um, you know, we, one of the things that I've I, I hear a lot of people talk about, and it seems like it's been very prevalent, is you know, neurodegenerative diseases, which you kind of spoke about for a second, Alzheimer's and dementia. <clears throat> My girlfriend, both of her uh, grandparents on her dad's side um, had either dementia or Alzheimer's as well, and that's one thing that she worries about for herself and then also for her father. So when you're saying these people don't go into this, if, if I'm understanding correctly, when they don't go into hormesis, basically they have old proteins and cells that are still inside of the body that the body hasn't flushed out. Is that what turns into the amyloid plaques that then de destroy the actual brain itself? Or is that something that's separate? And then in that case where somebody knows they have something, because there's a lot of people that have somebody that had a neurodegenerative disease in their family. Um, obviously we can't recommend, but the science, what does it say is best for that person knowing that that possibly you know, it could yeah. down, come down the line for them. All right. Well, first the diet, then the science. Uh, so the diet, I'm working with uh, Dean Ornish. You might mm -hmm. have heard of the Ornish diet. Mm -hmm. So Dean is, and I are with another five other scientists running in a clinical trial on Alzheimer's patients. And so far seeing dramatic results. Now his, his diet is lower on calories and focusing on plants um, and just really healthy food. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it seems to be working. Now, we'll publish this and we'll do more patients and get more data. But I think that that's the right approach is what he's saying. So if you want to look up the Ornish diet, I'd recommend doing that. O-N-O-R-N-I-S-H. Uh, now the science. Now there are misfolded proteins that accumulate in your brain. They form these little crystals. Uh, A-beta I mentioned is one. alpha synuclein is, is another. And they're very hard to clear. It's thought that actually your body just cannot get rid of these crystals and you find them inside the cell um, and very much so outside the cell. Now there's been a lot of debate, which is the worst form. Um, I think it's, it's clear that some of these are bad for you, no doubt, because there's some therapies based on uh, the clearance of these proteins outside the cell using antibodies. And they're starting to see uh, some pretty promising results. But I'll tell you my view is that it's far easier to prevent them than to try to reverse them. And this is why it frustrates me that very few doctors focus on what you can do leading up to actually get it, getting the disease. And that's not just true for Alzheimer's disease. It's true for everything. Right. And I think doctors, because their training has been on, we only treat diseases. We're not preventative, you know, medicine doctors. That's for the kooks. We need to change that attitude. <laughs> I mean, how, how many people's doctors spend half of the time with their patient talking about lifestyle, which mm -hmm. I would say, especially in midlife, is far more important than worrying about you know, what kind of flu you might be catching.